and welcome back to the Overwatch Pacific Championship English broadcast. I'm Avril, still with me a Smite and Pixie as we're about to get into Blank Esports versus Flash Wolves. The rematch that we've been waiting for, two of the best teams in the competition. What's going to happen, fellas? Well, that was hot into it there with Blank. We already uh, got to meet Flash Wolves earlier tonight. Look, who knows what's going to happen? That's really what Blank are facing right now. Like, you don't know what Flash Wolves are going to pull out. You don't know what comps they're going to run. You don't know what maps. You don't know anything. I'm going to have a few words from coaches beforehand. Ray on the right, Serenity on the left. So we've got uh, three very difficult matches this week. Uh, uh, <laughs> this week. <laughs> no, uh, I'm still kind of thinking about this. 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 We're not going to give Flash Wolves an easy run through. We're not going to allow them to be that relaxed. And of course, we did see Serenity's handy little notebook in his left hand as well. So, strats out today, boys. Strats out today. It's going to be an exciting one, to be honest. Like, just. There are still so many questions hanging over blank, and like this is such a tough series to have them yeah. answered in as well. If they even get answered, like we were saying before, you know, they're only just back on the horse. They were able to overcome Matchy. That was probably um, the most significant test, given that Matchy are kind of knocking on that playoffs door, and now it's like about as dire as it could possibly be. Like blank need to win literally one game, and then Matchy are out of the standings. But I don't know if this is going to be that game. Exactly, because blank uh, opening up with the hardest match of their entire fourth and final round robin, right? This yeah. is it, this is, it's like starting a level and the final boss is the first enemy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also, in the, it's, in the fourth, it's in the fourth and final world though, right? Because this is the fourth round robin. So this is where everything is going to start to count and we all know how important this match is. Yeah, Absolutely. So taking a look at the uh, rostered up, quick refresher man of Flash Wolves. You saw them just before, man. You know all about these guys by now. And uh, really, they're just an MVP farm. Blank, on the other hand, Ata, Trill, RQT, Gunbear, and a few others there, uh, just in case you weren't sure. And we will, uh, of course, get our lovely close-ups. Get the, get the close-ups of the play cams in here. Of course, this is, this is going to be real mint from Flash Wolves. So, like I said, we just saw Flash Wolves, a fantastic squad so far. Top of the tables, and deservedly so. They look nigh unstoppable. AHQ can stop them. Machi could not stop them. Machi could barely wound them. Blank. Is their fate going to be the same? Are Blank going to be the team to break down Flash Wolves? And they're going to need to try. They're going to need to be able to get there if they want a shot at the number one spot. And the thing is, look, based on their most recent performance, if you snapshot it, the answer is no. No, they cannot overcome this. They are not the team to do it. But when you look at this kind of trajectory, look, we've got two points of data since their recovery, if you will, began. One of them is against the two Japanese teams. The other one is against Machi. And the improvement between those two was significant in itself, but the level of improvement to go from there to beating Flash Wolves has to be exponential. We just don't have enough to say whether it is actually possible, whether this is the team. I would still lean towards no, but there is just enough of an unknown quantity there, an unknown factor, that maybe it is yes. I'll have to see if Serenity's notes that he had with him will be able to change the course for Blank, I know they have been preparing hard and fast for this one. RQT has said himself, we've made a lot of progress in the past week and they want to show it this week and they want to show it specifically against Flash Wolves. Now this is the squad that we're talking about. We haven't seen these guys since the last weekend and they, uh, they had a good run last weekend. We sort of said this was going to be the beginning for them to sort of show they're back on track and I, I believe it was, it was against one of the Japanese teams and they had a very good run yeah. against them. That was an expected run, but this is the real test. So they looked stable then, they mm. looked comfortable. They had fixed their mistakes. So. Yes, but is it good enough to beat Flash Wolves? Because we were also thinking, look, AHQ looked fantastic yesterday, right up until yeah. they had to play Flash Wolves. They to too, you're right, they looked like they were suddenly on this other level. Yeah. And then, yeah, they weren't able to quite overcome Flash Wolves. And I think the other thing that kind of carries into this, look, Blank will have prepped for this matchup above all else this weekend, at least for today. I mean, this yeah. is the only match they have. They didn't have to play anything yesterday. They've had that little bit of extra time and they've now seen Flash Wolves as well. They've really got 
everything possibly going for them, and if they can't get it over the line here, maybe they never will. Okay, gentlemen, so the map pick has come out from Flash Wars on the home side. It is, of course, going to be Oasis, so we're not going to see Lee Jung, we're not even going to see Nepal or anything else. Oasis is going to be the pick out. It's something that we've seen blank only a couple times on. Yeah. In fact, uh, it was played a lot in the last round, Robin, but since then, you know, is it going to be another map that's going to get played a lot in this round, Robin? It's going to Seems start so. today in this matchup. I think this is something that plays a lot to the strength of Flash Wars and the fact that you can just stick Zonda up on the multitudes of high ground, especially on city center, and then have Bacon Jack run wild on the ground. And then you're also to a point baiting blank into certain picks they might not feel comfortable on. A lot of teams feel that they do need to start trying to run the Farah fit one of those in there somewhere, particularly on city center, but it can come into play on gardens as well. So this is something that Flash Wars, I feel like, have it in the bag there, composition-wise. And I want to just remind audiences as well the way the formula works. Flash Wars as the home team get map picks one, three, and five. And that's going to be the control, the assault, and the final hybrid if we get there and the corresponding starting sides. Blank on the away side will get map picks two and four, which will be the first hybrid and the escort if we get there as well as the starting side. So, Oasis, first map, Smite, you've said your piece on this one already. We've kind of got a bit of a known quantity here. We know uh, some of the picks that these teams like to go. We know both teams can go for that fair. We know both teams can go for the Sombra as well. That does seem like, at least on paper, compositionally, an even matchup. I feel like what a lot of this will actually come down to is uh, not necessarily who predicts the other team and who reads the other team, but who adapts to the other team. How do they deal with whatever the enemy team picks? And I really hope that we see actually both of these teams really reacting on the fly. It's going to make for a very exciting match. Absolutely. And I still cannot, for the life of me, figure out what that black spinning all the spike I think it's a ferro fluid. It's a, it's a magnetic fluid. Just thought you should know. <laughs> well, the more you learn. Yeah, well, uh, in any case... Yeah, opening engagement indeed, and actually Flash Wolves are kind of getting the hurt on here. Atar very well set up. Look at Blank, they're already reading this Blank from Bacon Jake. They've taken out Jongi. This is exciting indeed. Zonda up. getting very hard pressured. Look at this Blank, running the 2-2-2. This isn't even the triple DPS, and the pressure is just all there. Now Flash Wolves seem to have found an opportunity to kind of swing back here, but losing Bacon Jack should spell disaster for that. Do have the EMP up, but I think without Bacon Jack and the pressure down onto Realman now getting picked means that they can't really commit to the fight just yet. That was a super strong opening from Blank as well. I said part of the formula was shutting down Baker Jack. Now, one thing they got that right was getting Jongi. Machi at no point could ever shut down Jongi on a tag. MP done. That is something Blank have done now. There it goes. Now, how well can they close it out? Because Zonda goes piling in. They do catch Gunba, but he gets taken out smack down. And Bacon well. Jack down as well. They do get RQT as well. So there are no more healers for Blank in this fight, but they've still got the DPS pressure. Sinclair desperately trying to charge these packs back up, but he's starting to lose a bit of control over them here off to the sides. And Blank are going to hold tight through that fight. Yep, EMP was Jungie. a big factor for Flash Wars. Not enough so far to get actually them the cap over. Jongi dying early again spells a lot of trouble for Flash Wars. You see the health pools die down very, very quickly. A lot of pressure on the camo now. And it's that lack of health pack control. They kind of lost it there. Sinclair, he's just getting the ultimate back up now, but they don't quite have all the health packs. It's not ideal. And Blank now have a good run of ultimates coming up. Yeah, so this is uh, a comfortable position for Blank and a difficult one for Flash. We're going to need to rely on another EMP here. There it goes. There it goes. They do again get Gunba early, but they seem to have dealt with the Storm now. That's a great pick to catch Atar because that's no attack visor remaining now. Trill commits the ultimate as well, but RQT holds his. Eat you up, going to hold his as well. And Trill is actually going to retreat despite that ultimate so that he doesn't give too much ult charge over. And now there is a brief window before EMP comes back up. The problem here is that Flash Wolves held all their ultimates as well. They played that EMP play. They made it work for them without committing anything else. A lot of teams usually have to put a Dragon Blade there. They have to put in an ultimate of some kind, but Flash Wolves got away with a lot. Here comes the commit quickly out on the sound barrier, looking for the position. Now the EM, sorry, that's not even the EMP, that's just the hack onto Ata. Zonda gonna try and open up on the back line. Good reactions by Gunba to keep the team steady through that one. And now they seek the swing back with the tactical visor. It's gonna have to be zoned off. He gets bumped off the side. Does find K Momo off the back end of that, luckily, and they get the pressure down. Kiki self destruct catches Jongi, and they're looking poised to clean up. Sinclair's uh, EMP will actually Late come EMP. out. They wanna commit to it because they do still have the DPS alive, but they're not quite catching the follow up here. Blank do need to get the pressure down into these DPS before they can get back to these hacked health packs. And they are starting to make it work. Looking poised to catch this cap through now. That was 
A really, really skinny one there for Blank, but they do look like they might get it over the line here. Not quite, because Ooh. Flash wasn't getting enough Yeah, kills. hold on. They, they were able to stall it out. Blank used all six ultimates there. Flash Wars did not actually have to do that. The EMP towards the end, the lifeline for Flash oh, Wars. Boy. They do keep them alive. Now we've nearly equalized the progress here in Flash Wars. They never gave away a percentage of cap at all during that last engagement. We've and it's even. Jump as well. Eight stars on the Pharah. And that's that health pack control. Even though it was just really the two squishy DPS, they were able to keep retreating to these health packs and they still have that control now as they try and go in for a second round. Already, this Pharah absolutely nailed and yeah, deadly reflect indeed. It actually killed Gunba and took all the health off Atar so that uh, Zonda could go in. That was really gorgeous. And now Blank have nothing to go off this final This push. is a fairly late change up from Blank. They changed up compositionally, I would say, uh, at the final hour because we're about to hit 90%. They changed up roughly 75. I don't know if they have time to really get back into this. There's not going to be a res. There will be an EMP from Sinclair, and that's going to be deadly. Flash Wolves have done so well with EMP so far. Oh, good catch on to K-Momo, catching him out of the mech. Now going to go aggressive. Bacon Jack heavily pressured off to the side, yeah, and used... Zonda does open up on the back line. What? Gunba gets the headshot. He does get taken out by Jongi, but Blank actually do still have a good rack of members here. They still need to pressure out these DPS, and they're having a hard time with it. Self-destruct goes wide, but Trill is now onto the back line. Bacon Jack is trying to go hard, trying to go unopposed, and Blank are desperately trying to answer him as well, but the health pack control is still there. Bacon Jack can constantly heal up, not until I eat you up. It's found him though, and Blank just barely, barely look like they're gonna get this cat back the moment they catch Sinclair. Still and stalling. They to, yeah, they are stalling, and I don't blame them. They've got the EMP out. If they don't kill Sinclair, that's gonna be committed, and Flash Wolves will have the members through. The sound barrier gets committed. There's the EMP, catches the last end of the sound barrier now. Gunba does not have the res just yet. Trill gonna stall for time here as they're trying to absorb as many Flash Wolves ultimates as they possibly can. Get the shutdown on Zonda, and that could be all they need to turn the Eaten. tides here. Eaten sticky, but they've got the pressure anyway. Trill does commit the ultimate to secure it out, and they get the cap through. What a nail biter. Wow, that was a tough one because Flash Wolves, I actually think Sinclair played the EMP far too slowly. You actually see RQT use a sound barrier quite early there. Sinclair could have used the EMP straight away, nullified the shield from the from the sound barrier straight away. That would have been Flash Wolves taking a much better fight. They bought a lot of time, but unfortunately, the time they buy, not useful. They're already on overtime 99%. They end up feeding a decent number of volts here. Now Gunba on the res, this is a good place for Blank to be. You have to kill Gunba first. That is Bacon Jack's primary objective. But they've already lost Realman. EMP goes wide and doesn't catch enough as k was down. They do catch Gunba though, and now the aggression comes on. They've found Trill on top of this one. They're trying to get the pressure back as they catch Ichu up. This is a really tight one because they did catch Bacon Jack as well. Atar, he's uncontested in the skies, but he doesn't have enough healing. There's only Gunba's RQT. Alive. He's trying to keep it on top of Zonda against the rocket, and that could be it. That could be all they need to spell disaster for this one as he gets Realman as well. And now Trill trying to keep this point alive as came over. He will catch Ata at the last second, but here comes it's Dunbar. Rich. The res, but it's not enough. It's not enough. That was so tight. I don't know if Flash Wolves got the cap through. No, no, Blank actually won that one. That was just intense. Ryan in there. So Flash Wolves, came unfortunately. wasn't on it. Yeah, not quite enough, not quite enough right at the end. There was one moment for Flash Wolves where they needed to capitalize. They killed Gun, but that's good. You've denied the res, but you have to clean up the rest of the members. Ata, we saw his point of view. He stayed alive for so, so long. RQT kept them going despite Gumba being out of the fight. If they had cleaned up the kill onto RQ, if they had to kill, clean up the kills onto both RQT and Ata, I suppose. But just about everybody on the rest of Blank, I mean, that would have been it. Gumba spawned in pretty late. By the time he got in, he just rezzed. I believe one member and that was just Ata. That is the cleanest game of Overwatch from both teams we have had this entire tournament so far. If every single of these points is like that one, we had the game of the century on our hands. Might just be that, and we're not even into playoffs just yet. This is a, this <laughs> yeah. is a good start for Blank so far. They need to keep this one going. It hasn't been... Can't celebrate too early, Ooh. that is a decent pickup though. So, so far, Blank are the ones getting the early pickoffs at the start of every single one of these fights. Look at how much pressure Eat You Up is able to exert. It's like he's put on Bacon Jack's boots here or something. Well, to be honest, like he, Eat Up was the penultimate tracer of the tournament right up until Bacon Jack sort of took a spot for a bit. Now, Eat Up wants his spot back. He wants that number one tracer position in the tournament. And I would say, in terms of the tracer play so far, Eat Up's the only one that has been able to contest and beat Bacon Jack. 
This is already looking a little bit tight. Now Flashlight's going to try and come around this backside. They're having great target selection with this Discord Orb. Now the dive in from Kiki. He needs to not go too far. Sorry, from Trill rather. But they've already got a good catch on the Baker Jack again. That is Trill going in a little bit too far, unfortunately. But the pressure is still there for Blank. They're able to catch out Zonda anyway. And now there isn't really enough DPS to protect anyone here. So the tank should just become big uh, health farms really for Blank's ultimates. Exactly, and they're getting those ultimates up as well. Eggtail already sitting on tag visor. Flash was looking fairly lean, even trying to get the suicides right at the end. Unsuccessful with that. A lot of time going in the favor of Blake. A lot of time wasted, unfortunately, for Flash. Was great protection onto Aether. Not so good onto Zonda. You see Zonda sort of just hanging around the back, almost uh, nearly getting hit by cars, almost. And Gumba eventually takes him down. That's a bad loss. Zonda is, unfortunately, one of the easier members to pick out on Flash Wolf's side. And again, the ground control is all there for Blank. They are the ones dictating where Flash Wolves go. They need to start putting on the pressure now, though. They're already trying to deal with Bacon Jack around the side. Atar has this ultimate available. They want to get K-Momo's mech out of the picture if they can. This is just enough time for Flash Wolves to get their ultimates up as the fight breaks out with the sound barrier. Toss Bomb going wide out of, uh, out of Bacon Jack there. Yeah, Transcendent Cells come out as well. Here's going to be the open up. K-Momo right into the face of it. And, it's, down. and there we go. That's all they needed to find with it. Now he's looking to get on top of Bacon Jack as well. Doesn't quite catch because the sound barrier was there, but Blank are looking tidy throughout this one. Jongi's ultimate isn't really getting much. It's not even displacing Blank adequately for his team to follow up. That's going to force out the self-destruct from K-Momo. They do get a little bit back for it, catching Atar now. Each you up could still close this one out with a pulse bomb. This is still anyone's fight. That's the catch they needed. Getting out Bacon Jack, they should be able to hold this one down. The overtime is there as well. Zonda trying to close it out now with attack visor. Two tanks in his face. This is a, a disaster for Zonda so far. Not really getting much with that at all. Oh. Gets the mech, gets Kiki as well, but they're still in overtime. It's still 0 to 99. The team has groups though, so with the back of that, they might just be able to come back into this, but they can't afford to lose anyone in so doing. And Blank do still have this ground in their control. In fact, they're not done yet either. The catch onto Atar though, that should secure it as they get Trill on the backside, and they will be able to get a point cap over. And Blank got to be careful here. They don't want to make a mistake that Flash was made earlier, which was overcommitting onto a lost point, specifically onto one where delaying doesn't buy you more progress. It just gives the enemy more ult charts. So Blank, smartly so, they do back off. They will come back another day, and they have enough of an advantage that giving away the cannon out of Flash Wolves doesn't mean a lot. And Flash Wolves are sitting still fairly lean at ultimate sound barrier for both teams. It won't be enough for Flash Wolves to hold on. It really makes you question, and even then, Blank, look at this going straight for the high ground again. This is something that a lot of teams have done while Flash Wolves have taken the low ground. They've made it work Thunders in the past, forward. and it looks look like they're that. making it work again. Yeah, very far forward as they get Kiki's mech, and that could be all they need. They're not quite able to pressure Zonda as they force Atar into the low ground. He's in full retreat. They try and pressure him. Haven't quite got him. Now they pressure Zonda and catch him, yep. and that's the trade they need with that sound that's barrier the running. They're getting a lot more mileage now, and this tech visor is chewing through the transcendence. It's forced that one out. They do lose their tank, but they've got the members here in a good enough position they're trying to close these last few kills out bacon jack he's a little bit unopposed on the side though they do catch jongi each you up needs to absolutely wreak havoc pulse bomb doesn't quite catch anyone but the damage is there and the self-destruct closes a lot of ults from flash bacon jack and zonda have ultimates that they must commit now this is such a difficult time for flash Wolves and black they got to get this one back to incentives and primal rage still ready to go but as the point in control flash Wolves couple of kills coming in the way. They do deny out that was the self Zongi's out of the fight as well. So these Miles ultimates away. going onto some Flash Wolves are not being used. The cap almost goes over in fact. It almost does. And Flash Wolves now in a little bit disarray. It gives Blank time to actually regroup on the point. But it also gives Flash Wolves a bit of time to regroup. Now they're going to use their own tactical visor. The Pulse Bomb has already got a bit of mileage. There's the tactical visor now connecting. And Blank, they don't quite push it over the line. They didn't it's quite dangerous. get enough people off the point altogether. And they look like they're going to get pushed out here. This has still been kept by Flash Wolves the whole time. I don't think seconds. Blank have time to get back on this. Yeah, good spawn camp here from Flash Wolves. Should secure at 95. Only four more seconds left to go. The final members from Blank actually no can touch have it. to just run for it. And even Kiki trying as he will. Not going to get there in time. And Flash Wolves played that the final moments of that fight very, very well. It took them so long because, look, ultimates from Flash Wolves were held. And they did not use some Bacon Jack died. He didn't use the Pulse Bomb. Cool, maybe respawn with that, but it, it is a huge risk. If Flash Wolves were on thin ice the entire time, any cap over in Blank's favor could have spelled doom for Flash Wolves. The fact that they held on right until the end, roughly the 90% mark, then Zonda and Baker Jack decided to turn their ultimates on, get the kills, and look, Blank, they couldn't respawn yeah. in time to contest.
but I haven't seen flashels in that dire a spot for so long. Props them for playing it cleanly enough to turn it around, but Blank are giving these guys such a run for their money. Or oh, heck, is it Flashel's giving Blank a run for their money? I can't tell anymore. That was the second 99 to 99, and I expect the third to be exactly the same. I have no idea how this game is going to fall. It's going to be a difficult one. It is so even right now, which is exactly the game we were hoping for, exactly the game we wanted. Gumba going down oh, means dear. the first time Trade back, Blank though. do not get the first pick oh. of the opening fight. It is still very even until now. Yeah, that's the one that secures it. It's the catch on Atar. Eats you up as well. They force Kiki out of the mech. Chill becomes an alt charge farm, and that is going to be a clean cap out for Flash Wolf. That is a devastating it's loss a for Blank as well, because Blank, look, They've lost a couple fights in there. They haven't really lost a big one at the start. And the big one at that start does give Flash Wolves a lot of, of breathing space. And so far, if City Center's anything to go off of, Blank had a fantastic start and still got reverse sweeped. Already trying to come out of the gates now. Flash Wolves, they know how to pressure our Blank, but oh, oh that's dear. one way. Yeah, Bank and Jack uh, putting his own boots back on now as EU up, not quite able to catch that 1v1 there. Trill now getting pressured out, and Blank suddenly find themselves a little bit surrounded. Look at where Zonda was in that. He was the one who was flanking around the side, catching them out. That was very rough and absolutely red there was Blank. And Kiki, the only member to make it out alive, so another five deaths for Flash Wolves means Blank do not get their ultimates here. Flash Wolves do get ultimates of their own, and Blank are further and further behind. They're so on the back foot now. They're going to have to play a fight where the best they can get out of this is forcing ultimates out of Flash Wolves. I would not expect Flash Wolves to give up this to give up this next fight. It should go to roughly 60% before Blank oh can my. again. Or, you know, Zonda just dies because he does that. And they forced out the recall from Bacon Jack as well, actually. They are getting aggressive now, Flash Wolves. They don't want to let Blank capitalize on this. The Pulse Bomb does get good damage, but it doesn't catch kills. Transcendence is out now, as this is Blank's opportunity to go aggressive. Flash Wolves still have a good defensive run of ultimates, but they've lost Kmoma's mech. He's forced to use the self-destruct now to try and make something happen, and it does happen indeed. They start to clear it out. They had to use all their ultimates for it, though, and they didn't run down the clock as much as they want. Oh, Chill committing one right at the end there, but it did force out the attack visor. Now Blank have a good run. Yeah, Blank have definitely held on to a number of vaults there. In fact, uh, they managed to fight roughly around the 60%, but they got a better fight than I expected because Zonda did get picked out super early. A weakness of Zonda that we've pointed out, something Blank have and should continue to exploit if they can, but they are running out of time. Good number of ultimates to come into the next fight with though. The only thing that's unfortunate, I mean, it did pull out the tactical visor, but now Trill does not have the primal rage. That could have bought them a lot of time on this. EU up has to find a great pulse bomb. Good catch on Jongi at the start. He's not able to retreat safely. Good cut off by Blank. Uh, Eat you up, in Atar. fact, doing that work. Trying to deal with um, trying to deal with Bacon Jack on the side. Atar doesn't find too much with the tack visor, but it's pressure. And now Flash Wolves are kind of beaten back. Unfortunately, they lose Eat You Up, but they've de they're approaching Zonda now. They've spotted out where he is. They know that he's trying to position around the side. They're forcing Kmoma off. The self-destruct goes through. They don't commit anything more than that and they may just be able to charge up some ultimates here. Yo, well, this is now Ooh. a slightly better position for Blank to be in. What a, a catch. A good catch from Bacon Jack as well. She's kind of slowed down Blank's ability to hold on to this point and speed up Flash Wolves retake as Zonda looks for prime positioning and look eat up as well. Forced out an early recall. Pulse Without. Bomb went wide as well. I think Pulse Bomb might actually have gone eat in there. Yeah, um, it must have, surely. And RQT only just got back to the fight, goes down to Sinclair. They do absorb this tactical visor, but they're going to lose Kiki's mech for it by the looks of it. They do get a good trade back onto Jongi. They have an opportunity here, even though they've lost Kiki's mech. Atar must stay alive here. His tactical visor, when it comes up, could be the difference here. And they commit the Transcendence as well to try and keep him alive. They try and good eat the whole. Like it is going to get completely eaten. Kmoma, good play indeed. Throws out the Self Destruct as well. They do at least take him down, but they go <laughs> once again RQT, guy can't catch a break, but neither can Zonda as he gets picked out, and they're looking lean for DPS now as Bacon Jack's ult goes wide, like are looking like they're gonna hold down this one. Again on thin eyes, this looks like City Center all over again, but the opposite now, Flash Wolves, they got an early lead, but they could get reverse sweep in terms of progress and Blank continue to hold this one, and they should do as well. Still got a primal rage to sort of delay maximum time, and RQT, he spent a lot of time in the spawn room, but he does manage to get sound barrier eventually. Good plays from Atar towards the end there, despite getting the majority of his tactical visor eaten up. 
holds it on for Blake. They still got a couple fights to win. That's a very early commit by them with the sound barrier, and there wasn't really a commit out of Flash Rules yet. Now they're going to commit their own, and they've kind of got presence on this. They catch Gunba too. That's a really big one, but training down the damage onto K Momo. And then they pop Atar here. Flash Rules looking good in this one. The trade does come back onto Zonda as they do finally get K Momo out of the mech, but Edie up in a world of hurt. His ult went wide as well. And again, now Bacon Jack running unopposed. You're looking to clear Triple up kill. the whole squad there. Blank now. They will just have to try and contest this one. They do get their own overtime, but it does look like Flash Rolls are going to cap it through. The overtime looking to tick down. Who's even here to contest? It's Gunba. He's not the ideal candidate for that. Atar gets cut up short by that pulse bomb as they clean up each you up as well. RQT not going to make it happen. And I don't think Trill is anywhere near this one. 2 1 up for Flash Rolls. None of these have been easy. Wow, this has been a huge struggle both ways. Blank could have easily won the ones they've lost. Flash Wolves, you know, this could have been over by now for them as well. This seriously could have gone either way. And small details are starting to go a very long way. It's right at the end there as well. End up getting taken down by Bacon Jack, converting the kill onto RQT, then getting Kiki as well, turns a triple, then gets a quadruple kill towards the end. I mean, these players are starting to run rampant. What I'm noticing for Flash Wolves is Zonda becoming a little bit of a weakness for Flash Wolves, specifically getting mm. picked out. Big damage dealer, but it's volatile because he dies as well. Ata, he deals less damage than Zonda, but he's safer as a player and he's harder to kill. Now we're back on a university. Is Bacon Jack going to come out on top of Eat Up? What's going to happen there? No Sombra here. I find this very interesting indeed. I feel like actually that was one thing that held Flash Wolves in this a lot. I have to see how this one goes. It's also risky for Flash Wolves because the first fight was super bad for them with the Sombra play. They, re they realized that as a weakness and now they want a better early gameplay. They got that on Guardians. They're looking to repeat it here in University. Yeah, Atar able to uh, retreat before Bacon Jack gets too keen on that opportunity. Trill a little bit deep. The follow-up wasn't there. He is a little bit too far forward without the DPS in behind him. And this just means Blank have to back off. They aren't actually quite going to get a trade kill there. It looked like they were maybe it's going to get one for quick. a moment. But they do just have to back off and not let Bacon Jack get too much room to play. Yeah, this is um, this is now Blank uh, really respecting that. Blank did kind of overstay their welcome, but Kiki had a lot of pressure as the solo tank after Troll goes down. He has to hold the entire front line, and Flash Wolves could have easily have collapsed and turned that into a six kill. It was just a slight misfire as well. Atar was still coming back to the fight when Trill went in, but now they've got an opportunity to commit and commit seriously. Atar a little low, and that's going to be the commit out of Zonda, but he's not found too much. He does get Ichu up. The boss one didn't one. find enough, but Atar, he can strike back. Zonda's pressured off. If they get him down, they're not quite going to get the follow-up on that, and he's going to strike back, hit Kiki, and Blank, they don't look like they want to commit to this anymore, and I do agree with that back off. That's a very difficult one. Atar was pressured out super early, and you see Zonda as well. He got a couple of kills out there. RQT was one of the targets, killing Eat Up as well, gives Bacon Jack a lot of space to move. The Tracer duel is extremely important. They don't even need to duel each other. Whichever Tracer gets pushed out, gives the other Tracer so much more room to breathe. And we see that with the Bacon Jack versus Eat Up struggle many, many times. Now I see this is the opportunity now for Atar to get aggressive if he so chooses. They know which side Bacon Jack is liable to come from now. They've spotted him out in advance. They know he'll come from the right. They have Everyone, a bit up. of an opportunity cooking. They have defensive ultimates, offensive ultimates. Blank looks set to be able to win this. There it is. The self-destruct gets forced out, and that means K-Momo is not there for a moment. They do get Kiki out of the mech, but there's the commit. They've forced out the transcendence now from Flash Wolves, and they haven't had to use much of their own. Atar, well, fortunately nothing with attack visor gets taken out. Zonda starting to clear it back and up, bad. and Blank don't want to commit any more ultimates of their own. This may have been their last opportunity, though. They have to back up now and come in for oh, the last fight. Kill. Oh, good indeed. And then they catch RQT for good measure. Blank, they might not even have time for one more. Well, RQT sends himself back to the spawn room, and this is starting to look like a previous match we've already seen for Flash Wolves against Blake. No one's on it. Dart right back onto the cat. Can anyone no get there? there? Just oh. in time, but still using ultimates very early. Transcendence coming through now They're as well. They've got to go for it. They don't really have much else aside from that, and they only just got Kiki back in the mech. He loses it immediately again anyway. They're getting the open up from Zonda, who is pressuring out Trill. They force them back. That's no it, one's there for it. Blank. And the last one does look a lot cleaner than the first three. If anything, I'm surprised it didn't go to double 99. But Flash Wolves will secure Oasis. Something Flash Wolves are extremely good at doing. Applause from the audience, applause from me right now as well, because not just for Flash Wolves, but in general from Blank as well. I want to applaud both teams if I can. If I could pick two winners, they could both be winners in my <laughs> books. But if we're going to have to pick one so far, Flash Wolves right at the end there. One thing they do extremely well is their ability to hold on to a cap. We saw that 
sometimes to their detriment, they will not give up a cap if they can help it. They will do it, they will, they will do so even by feeding members towards the end. Now where they do that poorly is when we hit the 99 mark, you're not gonna get extra progress off of that. They're still willing to delay even after that. Where they do it well is where we saw that on the university. Didn't give it up at all, 100 to zero, did not expect that result. And the thing is, uh, one thing happened there for Blank, and it, it's just set this dread in the pit of my stomach now, because they look so great, they look really clean, they look like they fixed all these things that were going wrong. And one of the big ones that had been going wrong was these misfires with when Trill commits and when the backline is kind of getting aggressed upon. They were having it with triple DPS, and we had it there. It only happened once. They only made that same mistake once but that may just be one time too many. If that is always a weakness you're gonna have, even if it's you know a 5% chance, that could be the difference between winning and losing. And I'll tell you the difference here as well. Right at the start, what we saw was Jongi getting taken out early. So it was the opposite towards the start, and right at the end, it was Trill being taken out early. The difference between the wins is every single play, specifically when we look at tanks and DPSs, the difference between who goes down early and who doesn't makes a, a lot of dividends. So yeah, I talked about tracers already, talked about the room tracer creates for the other tracer, and now we're talking about tanks as well, that frontline pressure, it goes. You lose your main tank, suddenly your entire back opens up. When Jongi died early, Bake, uh, when Bacon Jack, sorry, when Jongi died early, Flash Walls was entirely opened up, and the same happened mm -hmm. against Blank when Troll died. And even to a small extent as well, in a lot of the fights, we also saw the Zenyatta players getting taken out early. Gumba was uh, definitely one of the victims for that on Gardens as well. And that also leads into the Winston problem, right? Because Zenyatta is your strongest healer, because the only other one is Lucio, and Zenyatta alone is not a strong healer anyway. Suddenly, when your Winston goes in, there's no single target healing for him. Of course, Lucio is never going to be anywhere near him. So you take out that Zenyatta player with your own Tracer or wh whoever you want, and suddenly, the Winston, the cornerstone of their team, is very, very easy to take down. That was a really interesting match though, because I think one thing that we can take away from that, that was actually closer than AHQ's series against Flash Wolves on control, they were on Lee Jung, and I think the one that looked the roughest for Blank was Garden. Gardens has always been Blank's worst map on Oasis from start to finish. They seem to really struggle with the positioning on, they really struggle with the opening skirmishes. It's one of the few maps they consistently lost opening skirmishes on even right at the start of the tournament when they were looking dominant. And even with that, three of those four went to 99 and 99 and came down to a final fight that was a hair's breadth away from going the other way. That says a yeah. lot about how much Blank have pulled this one back, and I think we could have a very long series what on What I hand. want to compliment Flash Wolves on is their ability to adapt, though, because the second time we went to university, look, they got rid of the Sombra comp, they only barely stuck it through on the first time on university anyway. They said, this is just not gonna cut it this time around. Dropping that first fight is far too critical. They're not willing to take the risk. Sombra's super weak, as we've said, as we've known, and that initial skirmish, not willing to take the chances again. Yeah. So Flash Wolves, Fantastic start, snowballed that through into a 100-0, so very good adaptability. What we saw from Blank as well in the first university, they went on to that Farrah play right at the end as well. Yeah. Almost didn't work for them because super late swap out, they waited to what, 75%, yeah. nearly 80%. It was an overtime that they sort of brought her on back through. And um, look, right at the end there, it was, yeah. it was just a huge struggle and we nearly didn't catch who won. Yeah, it. yeah, that's the thing. It, 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 it was a hair's breadth from going either way, and that's what I said at the start of that match as well. It was going to be adaptability, and actually both teams demonstrated it, and there's still so many questions about where this might go now. And something, exactly. something I've got to commend Blank on, though, for uh, even though they did lose this map, was on City Center, right? They played Flash Wolves game. You guys said in the middle of the match, right? Flash Wolves love to just stick to that low ground and force everyone else to fight them. Blank ran head first into them and then won the initial skirmish and actually held the point in the same position up until 99%. And then it was only after that point where Blank wasn't able to struggle to come back. But the fact is they played Flash Wolves game and won for the first half of that map. Okay, well, I'm going to bring attention to now the map pick. It is Blank's pick as the away team. Map number two, Hybrid Numbani. We're going back, fellas. This is where Blank want to make their stand. This is where Blank want to make their mark. And they want to reclaim Numbani for themselves. I think that's the other thing that's happening here. Look, I'm going to go ahead and say it right here, right now, guys. Blank are back. I don't know if they're going to beat Flash Wolves tonight, but they're back. And I think they... They'll go back close. back, all right. Yeah. I feel like they could just go as close to undefeated as you can get with losing to Flash Rolls, and that includes beating AHQ. They've already beaten Machi last night. They, uh, sorry, last um, 
last week rather. They had to do it again in this round, Robin, and then this Hong Kong attitude. And I think they absolutely no. could do it based off that. If they reclaim Numbani as well, if they do actually pick up a win here, they were phenomenal at it before things started going wrong. I think this could be a true showing of their return to form. All right, I want to I want to get Smite's thoughts on Numbani very soon, but mm -hmm. one thing I'll add in quickly is the fact that what I've noticed in the past from Blank is they usually look fantastic on control. It's when we get to the other game modes they start to fall off. Now, will, will we see that again in this series? Question is still out in the open, but talk to me about Numbani a little bit. Okay, look, so the most questionable thing about Blank's Numbani is unfortunately going to be Atar's Farah, right? It's something that is going to be run uh, very likely on either defense or attack, at least one of those, if not both. And lately, his Farah has not been getting the most effectiveness out of it compared to a lot of the other Farahs so far. And so for that, for their Numbani play to work, they're either going to have to scrap that, run Atar on the Soldier, or get Atar to start hitting those missiles and also keep him surviving because you take out the Farah, suddenly Mercy is at a whole lot more risk. Well, there it is, and of course on Numbani as well. Thank you very much, Mike. We'll see you on the other side of this map. So, we all remember the infamous moments of the Arista attack from Flash Wolves onto Numbani against Blank even, and that was yeah. the old Flash Wolves. This is the new Flash Wolves. Not gonna make that mistake again, but Blank going back onto Numbani, it is familiar, familiar territory, and I gotta say, it's kind of almost, you couldn't write the storyline better, right? We're, we're on <laughs> the map yeah. where I think these teams have seen each other a number of times already. And I think if nothing else, Blank picking this map has been a demonstration of confidence because they avoided this map. After losing it to AHQ, they avoided it altogether. I think the only time they ended up pulling it out was when they were against teams like Fireball and Sun Sister and Detonator, teams that they were pretty confident against anyway. So this against not just a top three team, but the current front runner, this is confidence in yourself. It's a statement, and it's a statement I like from Blank, and it's not gonna be any fair play, nothing like that. Not gonna see it even. Trill onto the Reinhardt, it's a welcome sight. It absolutely is. Each really getting dull. a little bit pressured out. Yeah, he does actually spot out the flank though. He spots out the positioning and that is good for them because now here comes the react. They're able to keep Atar nice and safe. Good pressure onto K-Momo. They're trying to really surround him, but uh, Blank are doing a good job of not letting it work. And now it's actually Bacon Jack who's kind of getting forced into awkward spots. Oh, Zonda, Zonda is getting forced off to the side there. And that's great shutdown onto him there. Each up is keeping himself tidy. And look, they still haven't dealt with Atar. They committed everyone to it. They committed all their resources. They're finally wheeling around to the opposite high ground. Round, but this is actually Blank uncontested in their own position. They get all those kills through, and that was really well held by Blank. Massive pickup. Zonda's onto Genji as well, and like I've said so many times, Zonda is unfortunately a very easy target to pick up. This is a big weakness that is being revealed from Flash Wolves, and uh, something that not a lot of teams have been able to take advantage of, but Blank looking comfortable, about to get the first cap. Yeah, and uh, interesting to see that they opted to attack down as again. well. Don't see that a whole lot, but that's the tactical visor, you're dead right, to catch the respawns as they come flooding in. Deets, Deets, deals with an eats through, rather, the whole shield. Quick, clean cap, blank in control. Very good look at blank so far, and one thing that's plagued this team a lot is getting first held on a decent number of maps, including Numbani, so already, They've broken that. They've broken that curse on Nibani, and they could break the entire curse of losing Nibani altogether. Good deflects from Blank against the pressure from Flash Wolves. Killing Zonda has been the formula. They should continue that. And that's going to be the commit now defensively from Flash Wolves. Good minute to try and dig in their heels. Fortunately, the sound barrier couldn't quite catch Atar there as now Jongi's able to go even deeper, finds Gunba. Good Earth Shadow, but the follow-up not quite there as Jongi looking set to clean up the rest of this because, uh, honestly, DPS was half dead and you can't really rely on Eat You Up to clear up a whole team when he is pressured by a Winston. But they held on to some ultimates and they can get this payload underway. And just like Kiyomi said, it's the one-two punch left and right hook combo from Flash Wolves. Jongi will dive your backline and Bacon Jack will be there too and whoever is waiting on the other side, in this case it was Aether, lucky just hit, got hit by both sides, went down pretty quickly as well, great jump from Jongi's to gun, but next target selection was supreme. Already back underway now and good pressure. The dive straight onto Atar and they're going to try and go for this uh, aggressive fight once again. The payload did get distance before that happened, but look, if Flash Wolves keep playing this way, they will just run down the clock and Blank won't actually be able to get the cap through. Which is important for Flash Wolves because they lost so much time on cap number one. Flash Wolves, uh, they just lost that in one push from Blank, a very well calculated push. 
And Flash Wolves need to make up this distance. They need to make up that time difference if they want a better there shot at actually defending the rest of the map. Now they're going for a good commit here. They've kind of uh, caught Flash Wolves a little bit spread up, they do catch Bacon Jack, good deflect there to try and stop up Ata, who is getting hard pressure, but he deals. deals with Zonda anyway, will get bumped off the edge by Jongi, but now Jongi has to go into full retreat, will get out with his life, but Blank are able to strike back if they so choose, they've got to self-destruct, unfortunately losing Ata at the back end of that, Flash Wolves do have to give them some space though, so the payload will at least get some distance off this. And distance is important for Flash Wolves, or, or, or Blank actually so far, Good early kill from the self-destruct as well. Yeah. Forces out their transcendence from Sinclair, which unfortunately does not save your teammate. Like I said, that is the force back. Kmomo does catch Trill, and they're doing a, an okay job of stalling out the payload bit by bit, but they go back now. They're in position. Each up is able to start to wreak havoc on this back line. And Flash Wolves, if they don't give up a little bit of space here, they could find themselves a little overextended. The respawns are actually in for Blank now. If they can avoid the self-destruct, which they absolutely can, Kmomo going down to the pulse bomb while he was in that pilot mode as well. And this is Flash Wolves forced to give that space now and there's yeah. enough space for the cap to go through very well balanced by blank and flash holes they needed to figure out whether they wanted to commit or not because they kind of didn't need that they backed out still lost members didn't back out quite early enough or, or quickly enough i should probably say as well didn't manage to stop the cat Something classic for Flash Wolves is they're able to delay objective for so long, they weren't able to do it this time around. It's the thing, both teams just kind of scrapped on it for long enough. It was very finely balanced, and look, Flash Wolves, they really wanted to bleed it for as much as possible. They made it as hard as possible for Blank to get it there. But Blank, unlike a lot of teams, were very unrelenting, and Flash Wolves had to really balance their defense finally. Now they're able to go on the attack. They did unfortunately lose Kmomo, and they're not quite able to close out on Atar. Trill may just lose his life here. Oh, getting out with a sliver of health, just maybe. And Atar, he's looking to swing back now as he got that nano boost on him as well. How did Gunba only just die and Trill get out with the slide too? Atar smacks Jongi in the face. The path is clear, boys. Blank if they can catch these respawns as they come out of the base. May just be able to get a cap through. It's going to be Kmomo. He's got a lot of stalling to do. And Atar is set up on high ground now. Looking to drill through that shield. They're looking to close it out. They haven't quite got the kill. Good sound barrier to keep this one alive for Flash Wolves. Blank have got their members back as well. The uh, pulse bomb did get eaten out of eat you up. Uh, bit of a pun there. And Atar getting shut down. Kiki on the retreat. Flash Wolves will just hold on for a moment. And this is uh, something different for Flash Wolves as well. It's going to be Kmoma onto the Reinhardt. So two main tanks now out to play. A lot of health to get through. A lot of shield to get through. And Blank now going to get through the ultimates from Flash Wolves as well. So it's a big ask. Two minutes and 30 remaining. The cart is extremely full though. So for Flash Wolves, this is it. Their final chance to hold on to everything. Without that D.Va though, Atar's next tactical visor and each up its next pulse bomb could be absolutely devastating. Unfortunately there, Bacon Jack's one goes wide. They're able to top off Trill. And now they look poised to strike. Well, good early damage coming Ooh, from Bacon Jack. Oh, great well. catch. Is going to set the oh, tone. But he and Jongi were both too deep to make that one happen. So this is the strike back. Where and now this results? is that tactical visor. There's only a Reinhardt shield. They answer with Zonda's one. That's how they're going to make it happen. They're just kind of forced zoning out. And they had to use a transcendence blank. They kept their members alive through that. And they're going to wheel around for this attack. Now try to get on the side. Trying to get the position onto Zonda. Kmomo though taking out Trill on the front side. Blank may just need to give this one a little bit more space. Uh, they're going to have to. They're not even going to have a choice for that one anymore. And as Flash Wolves line up, this new sort of double tank, double main tank is starting to work out. Turns out you don't even need a diva. We're about to hit the Earth Shadow mode for Kane moment as well. Interesting use of ultimates from Flash Wolves because what they ended up committing was tag visor versus tag visor threw in their transcendence as well, but also had the shield up from K-Moment. Kind of wish they chose one or the other. Play the shield or play the transcendence. Don't do both. And now here's Blank. Swap up Trill himself. Going to move on to the Reinhardt as well. Possibly to block up that Earth Shadow. Certainly can't say I disagree with that one. Let's see when it's going to come through. There Who it catches it? And is a decent catch. The Sleep was able to connect, but no follow-up. Blank are able to retreat and they catch Zonda on that one as well. They do get a good trade back onto Atar. The sound barrier is keeping Blank alive as they try and strike back. Haven't quite closed out either Jongi or Kmomo who get the heals up. Bacon Jack dealing with Trill. Blank look like they're going to have to take a retreat on the chin here once again. And that's a bad time to be able to do it. Oh, it's a good time and also a bad time. They've got under one minute left to go. You wouldn't want to lose any more members here. You also do not want to waste any more time on that cut. Rushing back now. One ultimate in hand, they need a couple more because Flash Wolves are here to play with three. Early nano boost committed right out and they catch Atar. Zonda going big deep, doesn't even need a Dragon Blade. They do get one trade back onto Real Man, but it doesn't matter. The boost was already out and there's no one he even needs to top off. Blank are going to have to absolutely book it for this. They do have just enough time for, to wait for Atar. 
Whoa, it's going to be a big one. In fact, they've got to be careful not to lose Eat up here. This could be devastating. Ooh, he's trying to keep it alive. Just caught and Jack well. hot on his heels. Zonda there to sandwich him in from the other side. Cut off the path. Looks and now he's staring into a five versus six. Pulse bomb dead onto Trill. Absolutely nothing that Reinhardt can do about it. Precision German engineering does not protect against bombs, but it does kill your Soldier 76. And Blank, they are slowly getting cleaned up on this one. Will finally be able to commit their own uh, nano boost, but I don't even know who it came out onto. And Zonda sort out the style points. Blank do get shut down just before they get it over the line. But that was a lot, a lot, a lot of distance. Uh, right at the end there, Blank, they're going to be kicking themselves just a little bit because... Wow, I don't know what Edup was doing there. That's a very unfortunate mistake coming out of this play as we're about to highlight that because I've also now repeating myself a little bit, but when the tracer goes down, you see the room Bacon Jake gets. He's not yeah. going to get pressured by Edup. Here, Trill, have a pulse bomb, gets that next kill, turns a 6v6 into a 6v5, 6v4, and suddenly you lost your only ability to get back on the car, your only ability to contest again, all off the back of one kill. I don't even know why Edup was playing in that position. That's the thing. I wonder if the decision making was let's leave Edup a little bit closer so that if we take a bit longer to get into position than we expected, he can at least buy us over time. I can understand that line of thinking, but sure. Surely he could have done it safer, and then when he did have to go on full retreat, he did so in such a way that it was very easy for Flashwolves to cut him off, and that's exactly what Zonda did. Yeah, he was so deep that three blinks are not going to get you out. Also, by the way, Bacon J's got three blinks of his own, and you got a Discord order orb on you, and you're facing up against one of the best tracers in the tournament. You're not going to out-duel him because you'll get out-damaged. Your team's not even there. Bad timing, bad decisions. Blank, they're going to have to revisit this, but they can still win. They just have to hold out a bit longer. Where Blank were very good, is on this first cap. They got through the first cap so insanely quickly, they got massive time. So the third cap was where Blank started to really struggle with a couple of mistakes there. A couple of the other things that Flash Wars did well was K-Momo on the Reinhardt actually paid dividends. And that's the thing. The thing they have going for them is that payload was as good as capped, which means if they, unlike Flash Wars, are able to really play for time here and run down the clock, especially on this first point, then they can actually set themselves up very well to even just run down the clock before the payload can get that far for Flash Wolves. The bad part about it is because it wasn't quite capped, if it does go forward to the end for Flash Wolves, no time bank, that's it. All right, well, Flash Wolves have predicted the defense out pretty well. They thought maybe there's going to be a tote, so we are going to run the Pharah. They got that coin flip correct. Now, can they execute this lineup? It should be very interesting to watch. Good con con to the Torbjorn, but Zonda does need to be careful with this positioning. They're getting up onto this high ground to contest. Blank all together. Blank are going to have to wheel around, not lose any members here. Jongi getting pressured out. Still no one's game just Eta yet. Eta, he is able to just bear. <gasps> Bacon oh, there Jack, we go. so good. Bacon Jack right on top of him. And uh, it's could just crack open the defense here, even if they pick Zonda in response, because look at this, Bacon Jack, he's got this promenade ahead of him. They do get a trade back onto Jongi, and now Bacon Jack's gonna come over the top side now to try and pressure Blank back into the room. Flash will get onto the point, now the precedent is set for Blank to come out and contest. Yeah, well, it's gonna be an interesting one. RQG still stuck downstairs as well, gets the new turret out. Bacon Jack goes for the one, well, gets the Ooh. 1v1 win over Eat Up, and Sinkless this is the story all over again. Sinkless down, that could be all they need though, because that's no reason it would have been there. They're trying to secure this one out if they can, trying to get them back in, and they're having a bit of a hard time of it. Now, finally, Flash Wolves getting those last couple of kills. The ultimate comes out from Kiki, and at least forces a bit of zoning, but there aren't really members here from Blank to take advantage of that. This does create some space, some time, Chill committing his ultimate as well, but Singler is now back in, so even if they get kills through, the res can be there. They had to kill him again, and even so, Flash was again going on the aggressive, again looking to kettle in blank. They're not able to fight on this Atar point. Atar here. is trying to do it, but he's going to be forced back by the self-destruct, and it does look like Flash Wolves will get the cap. It took them longer than blank, though. That is the one thing blank have going for them. Well, blank actually not giving this up just yet. Resurrection was committed out of Singler, so this could still go either way, but Bacon Jake's left unattended. Bleeding them for everything that they they're worth, and they're still just barely standing on this point. They're able to catch Realman as well. You're right, Bacon Jack unattended. He does get Eat You Up, who was the last blank member on the point, but they lost a ton of time on that one. And a lot of members as well. So what you got to consider when you make a delay play for that, you're trading time for members and for ults. So Flash Wolves, they get a little bit of ult charge. Blank, they buy a little bit of time. We'll see if that investment pays off for Blank in the long run. But for now, it is Flash Wolves pushing through with a bit of momentum. A couple of... Uh, 
a little bit of wind behind their sails as well. I would expect Blank to maybe play this ne next situation aggressively, maybe try and buy themselves a second defensive play. Yeah, they really need to, but they don't seem to be keen to commit to it. They're just sort of regrouping and waiting a little bit. They're defending at more conventional defensive spots, Bacon but Jack. it does give Flash Wolf space. So now they only really have to win the one fight. And yeah, Bacon Jack already looking to get on the back Optimistic side. Pulse, pulse bomb wide, unfortunately. And the defense now comes in, the uh, cavalry, if you will. Bacon Jack actually really getting forced out, but it doesn't matter. Flash Wolves are getting the kills on the front side because too many of Blank are off on this wild goose chase trying to catch Bacon Jack, or should I say wild pig chase, and now eat you up. Good trade back onto K Momo. May just give them a little bit of legs in this fight, but they're losing eat you up here. They catch Zonda. Eat you up stays alive with the recall. Payload is underway, but Blank actually have an opportunity to dig in their heels. That's an important one as well. Killing Zonda off the top of that is what is going to give them that opportunity. Jungie's going to try and hold the front line with Primal Rage if he has to here. Losing Mick for Kiki would be pretty bad. Yeah, he's going to have to commit it now and go deep onto ATAR for it. Bacon Jack does catch Kiki's mech with that, but this is Blank now trying to make the commit happen. ATAR doesn't quite know which way to look as the Transcendence is there on one side and there's an ult and Gorilla behind him and Zonda. On the other hand, there's no such defensive ultimates for Blank and that will be the point cap coming through. Very little time run down and Blank now have a tall ask ahead of them to defend. And a full team I all ring the gong. That's going to be Flash Wolf pushing off through a good defense from Blank and now we see the Ryan Hart play out of k -Mama. In fact, he's, he must have had it for some time now because he's got the Earth Shatter available as well. What are Blank going to do about this one? So far, they've been hitting and missing. Sometimes they get the win, they kill Zonda early, they apply the pressure, maybe force Bacon Jack as well, but this time they're playing against a the composition they just lost to. That they are, they are struggling as well. They're not able to take any kind of aggressive defense. They can't seem to run the clock. Flash are making a ton of space for themselves. Finally commit the self-destruct so it's that they can at least grab a bit of positioning. Yeah, got bubbles. That's an Earth Shatter, but K-Momo does get taken down for it. The only one they catch in it really is RQT that they can secure a kill on as they get Zonda and Realman through. And it looks like they can actually clean up this fight. Gunba does go down off the back end of it, but they're happy to take that one. They only really needed to commit the one ultimate, and that is at least for now a hold. Yep, momentum down against Flash Wolves. Rip the sails off that boat. There's not uh, too much distance left for that cut to get on through towards the end, but Flash Wolves are working with a reasonable amount of time, similar time to what Blank had when they were up to this stage of the cap as well. So Flash Wolves, a big test and so far very even gameplay. So far indeed. Oh, this is dangerous for Trill. He is able to back off. But in so doing, it gives the payload space. The pulse bomb doesn't quite catch Gunba, but he's hard pressured, forces out the transcendence. They need to convert this into kills. Otherwise, this is all for naught. And Atar actually is still low despite that one. And he's nice being forced. Kill. Oh, it catches Bacon Jack. They had to commit to the fight now, though, because the payload is underway. They catch Jongi. They're looking to force them back now. If they can commit and maybe get a few more kills, it would be good. But they are going to play it safe and not try and route Flash Wolves. That could have realistically gone either way. Getting the kill into Gumbo early would have prevented the transcendence. So well played by Gumbo to be able to use that. The solo kill by Atar onto Bacon Jack as well changes the course of that fight. And eat up, then cleaning up the back line. Well, Flash Wolves are going to have to wait again, but they are ready. They've got the tech visor going. They have a transcendence as well. Just going to break past a little bit of frontline pressure, and the Zonda should be in killing range. I mean, frankly, whichever team gets picked first could determine it all. Oh, Kiki, good heavens! Threads the needle, gets it behind the shield, and that drew out the ultimate from Sinclair as well. That was a big swing for Blank. It does buy them a lot of time. Unfortunately, they don't convert many other kills onto that. They're not going to get anything else. They don't stall out Flash Wolves for too long. K-Momo makes a switch, actually, onto the Diva now. We're going to get rid of Lucio for Flash Wolves as well. So a couple of final swap-ups right at the end in the final moments. 1 minute 45 Ooh, remaining, man. and it is very tense. They have just enough time to get these online, and they do pick each you up. That's massive. Now look at this along the side of Zonda, but that's going to be the answer by Atar, who gets more. It's looking like Atar, as he did catch Bacon Jack, forcing the rest of the team back now. No shields to block it, but there is a defense matrix. Zonda is still alive in this one. No, and he's not. Oh, no, he's not. There we go. Gunba catching the headshots, and this cues the aggression now out of blank. That is a nice one there. Again, try to catch the route. May only get Jongi off the back end of this one. He kind of goes down so that Realman can get out alive. But Blank are looking like they've got their heels very deeply dug in now. And Flash Wolves are trading ultimates for ultimates equally, but unfortunately they're not getting distance out of it. They're not translating these ultimates into any sort of winnable advantage for themselves. Even still, that late change up hasn't rewarded them with any ultimates so far for their members. And Blank still sitting pretty back on that transcendence. Gumba used it to fairly good effect last time. I would expect the same from him looking for the flanks now for Flash Wolves as well. 
Look at Bacon Jack. You can tell he's hunting for it, and they're looking to try and get something around the side. Zonda's just going to try and push it down the front. It's a very early transcendence out of Gunba, and they need to turn that into some kills. Otherwise, they lose that defensive ultimate for when the Pulse Bomb does come. Actually, it did get committed. There we go. There's the kills. 30 seconds. Zonda catching, catching a few too many bullets there, and Jongi as well. 30 seconds indeed. And with those two losses, three, in fact, as Trill goes deep. And this time, I do agree with the aggressive play. It's not an overextension because it buys a ton of time. It burns the clock for Flash Wolves. Well, they got to get back on this one, 15 seconds, the clock it's going down to the so wire. so tight and the card is in a position where Flash Wolves can contest, they've waited for so long, they decided to throw away, throw away the last way, go for the respawns. Nanovisor is going to be up for Flash Wolves, that could be the big one and Kiki needs to create a ton of distance with the self-destruct, that's really all they have to go on, the sound barrier isn't there yet, there's going to be the self-destruct, it's very early as Zonda goes around the backside, Gun was already picked, they do catch Kmomo's mech in that but they've taken out Zonda Trill low. the payload is still contested Zonda low and out that's key Atar he's still up will have this tactical visor in a second Jongi can buy a ton of time and he's trying desperately to pressure out Atar and it's happening it's working he gets it and the, ta the tactical visor finds nothing they desperately need to get some respawns through here the payload is nearly at the end they're getting all the no kills through. who can contest it who's here Trill comes flying out the gates they're desperately trying to keep this one alive now as Gunba is too squishy to make it happen it you up as respawn. He will contest as well, but they're not converting kills. There's no safety for Ata as Down he gets routed out, and it looks like it's going to happen in the overtime. Despite a massive hold out for Blank, they can't push it over the line once again. The pulse bomb looks like it's, it can secure it as Kiki only by seconds. Trill, he may be able to buy more if he flies onto this with the ult, but not quite in time. And Flash Wolves 2-0 up in a second nail biter in a row. And that would be a sigh of relief from the Flash Wolves members. If they got sweat towels, now would be a good time to use them. Maybe you can borrow mine afterwards because I'm sweating for blank. I'm sweating for Flash Wolves and both of these teams right to the end in the final moments. Overtime on Numbani. Wow, this is this is something else. I feel after watching that. Even if Blank do lose Assault, look, even if they get shut out in Assault, they're the second best team in this tournament. No one has made Flash Wolves sweat that hard in two whole round robins. That is close to two months of play. All right, welcome back, Smite. How are you feeling after that? Sweaty as us? About as sweaty, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was ridiculous. I honestly thought Blank had it in the end. When they were on the third checkpoint, they had just under three minutes to hold it that short distance. That wasn't even the entire checkpoint they had to hold, and they almost did it, and I actually thought they were going to be able to do it. It was just, nail bite is the only real word I can use for it. The thing is as well, and I suppose this is, you know, the blessing and the curse is the same is true of the offense. It was really, really tight and they played so incredibly well. They almost did it, but they didn't. They didn't twice in a row. They didn't get it over the line on their own offense. They didn't quite hold it on their own defense. And when all is said and done, even if you are matching the team blow for blow, the one that gets it over the line is still the better team. And that's why I say Blank are the second best right now. Exactly right. I would have to agree with that statement as well, because at the moment, when we look at the final moments of sort of both sides, it is Blank sort of flailing. When, when it gets to the overtime, Flash Wolves are the ones that yeah. pull it through on both sides. When it comes to Blank's attack, Flash Wolves just manage to pull on through, and Blank don't have enough gas left in the tank to get the final, to get it over the line in the final mark. And when we look at it on the Flash Wolves attack side as well, Blank, fantastic defense for about three and a half minutes onto that third cap, and then what happens right in the overtime, run out of juice, no more ultimates to use as well. Players just sort of respawning and trickling back onto the point. Cool, but yeah. not getting the kills. You said it yourself during the cars, they weren't getting the counter trades. If they were getting the counter trades, maybe then there wouldn't be the ability to actually get the hold in because the respawn advantage actually means something. And in that chaos, it starts to look like Dragon Ball Z, doesn't it? Flash Wolves, while Blank start to flail a little bit, they trickle, trickle on, they don't get the return kills. Flash will somehow keep it together and they sit there like, now this is my final form. And they just hold it together throughout all that now, nuttiness. One thing that I have noticed is that coming up from Flash Wolves versus Blank, what would have happened for Blank on that final attack had they not had the disaster of a pickup from Edom leading onto the Pulse Pump kill onto Trill? And that was a huge snowball momentum coming up from Bacon Jack that really turned on the heat. So. It spelled it's a the big, It's a big disaster for Blank because it was like a hole in your ship just got blasted open by another cannonball and suddenly you just sink. And also, 
another scary, disastrous moment for Blank was on that final moment on the defense, right? The, the fight that actually won the match for Flash Wolves was, and this this actually caused my jaw to drop right down to the floor, right? I, I was there. It yeah, it, it actually happened. Right? I flicked it back up, but now it was when Wouldn't I saw. Like, do that again now, just to prove that you can do that. With no, the I can no, 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 no. It's got to be really shocking. Okay. Yeah, exactly. You got to really shock me. But it was when Please I saw try. I saw that mech fly up into the sky from Kiki, that self-destruct, and it was clearly to try and get some kills, try and get some zoning out. Okay, fine. But you saw immediately Zonda just said, oh my god, there's no defense matrix, and sprinted around the back. And while he didn't actually get too much with his uh, tactical visor, right, it still demanded the attention of Trill. Because, of mm -hmm. course, Kiki's out of his mech getting back into it and in some corner in the, of the map, but Trill is drawn away from the fight. There's suddenly no tanks in the play for the rest of Blank, and that's where Flash Wolves were able to push through. You could see, actually, Atar was pushed up into a corner yeah. by Jongi. I actually exactly. want to speak to that because that was a smart individual play for Zonda. Yeah. He yeah. turned a bad situation into a flanking maneuver that really demanded attention, and you're right, it split up the defense from Blank, and that kind of cost him in the end as well. The funny thing is, he actually tried to do it a split second before that as well. He went around the side when Atar's here. I can't do this. But in so doing, didn't actually show that. Which is why Blank felt comfortable committing that self-destruct. And you're right, that telegraph, no defense matrix. Suddenly, yeah, Zonda was able to do that. Yes, it drew Trill in. And also, more importantly, like you said, it drew Atar into the spot where Jongi could capitalize. And then the capitalization happened. It was absolutely gorgeous play. And the other unfortunate thing there is Gunba did commit a very early transcendence. That probably all could have been absorbed if they still had that transcendence. Because they could have committed that onto that tactical visor instead. They would have been able to hold ATARs for a second longer, ride out Jongi. We would have looked at a completely different fight. Much like how on the offense, if Ichiwa had have just retreated to a safer spot, much different fight. And that's what you said last game with uh, Oasis is, it's like this, this little game of inches, man. Like the details matter so much right now yeah. because they are, are what is currently spinning this game into victory or defeat for these teams. When you have two teams this closely matched, the smallest details absolutely do make the difference at the end of the day. And now Zonda, I do want to speak to this guy a little bit more. Good decision making on one hand, gets insanely picked out on the other hand, super mm -hmm. easily as well for just totally random reasons. It's just like, how did he die there? What happened? We saw an Oasis and I watched this. Allergies. I, I just saw this on Oasis and Atar's on the high ground shooting down and suddenly Zonda's just pushing it out by himself. I'm like, why is, why is Zonda there? Why is he pushed up so forward by himself and he gets taken out pretty shortly after that. So this guy is starting to become a bit of a pillar of strength for the team and also uh, the same pillar that starts knocking down your stru the structure of your house. Yeah, and there is also something uh, something else kind of going on afoot here on the blank side of things to speak to a weakness. And it's not a singular weakness, but much like they had that one kind of back slip on Oasis where uh, they kind of miscommitted, Trill was in it at just a slightly disjointed time compared to his DPS. There was maybe just a bit of a communication breakdown. It's hard to say exactly what went on. And then we saw the same thing with Eat You Up not quite retreating to the ideal spot. And it's those tiny little mistakes, and I think it speaks to there still being just this this one little patch of rust, like somewhere you know in the wheelhouse or something of the car, somewhere they just didn't quite check that seems to be coming back to bite them. Something cool I want to note about what I saw during that match was Flash Wolves were clearly bringing out something different. Reinhardt and Winston in the same team was a little bit new. We haven't seen a lot of that in the OPC. And Blank, I've got to say, felt a little bit uncomfortable at times because you could actually see as soon as they noticed that there was a Reinhardt on the third checkpoint attack they were, they were actually hovering Trill back onto the Reinhardt but they swapped him back to Winston at the last second it seemed like they were yeah. really and, quickly trying to yeah. decide and is now answer. Flash was now trying a, a little bit of new tech we've seen some new tech on Numbani sorry on Hollywood as well what are we going to see on Assault we're going to have to find out very very soon as we're about to head into map 3 of Flash Wolves versus Blake right after this Welcome back to the Overwatch Pacific Championship English broadcast. We're about to head into map number three of Flash Wolves versus Blank Esports, and it's been a nail biter so far. I'm Avril with me still is Pixie, and of course, Smite as well as we're about to head into map number three. I was going to ask what you guys think it was going to be. It's going to be kind of more yeah. Flash Wolves pick, <laughs> so I, I will instead refer the answer to the, the question rather to this assault. Assault in particular has been traditionally mm -hmm. Blank's weakest mm -hmm. game mode. What do you guys think of that? I think it doesn't matter what we think it's going to be. It matters what Flash Wolves think it's going to be. And Hanamura is actually their stronger of the three. They're one of the only teams, I think, that can boast having an assault map that bodes well for them. And yes, 
Assault has also been a weakness for Blank. I feel like this is going to be the hardest test of all for Blank. They've already impressed me so far. They've already actually overwhelmed my expectations, even though they haven't yet won anything, but they're gonna have to push even more out here. Exactly, because this could be the hardest game yeah. out of all for oh, them, yeah. right? When, oh, they, it, it, when it they need to win the most. Yeah, I think the most is definitely gonna come down to, obviously the second point, because that's where <laughs> a lot of teams struggle to actually cap. But then again, it's gonna be about how much time they buy on the first point. A lot of teams will just break through, and this is against even some of the top t three teams as well. They'll break through within about a minute on the very first push, go into second point with six or seven minutes. Blank need to do that. There's no question about if they're going to do it. They have to do that to get the maximum amount of time on the second checkpoint. And then something the Blank do consistently is both a blessing and a curse, is they very, very consistently go through the same attack path on Hanamura. They don't change things up. And this is a blessing because of course, once you finally find that hole in the enemy's defense to make that plan of attack work, it works wonders. But if it doesn't work, if you can't find that hole, then defense will always hold. Flash Wolves will hold blank there forever. And this seems like a very kind of fit map storyline wise as well, because the first time we saw Flash Wolves versus AHQ, and the, it was on Assault on Hunter Moore specifically, where Flash Wolves beat Blank. I know Blank yeah. still won that one three and one, but Blank tasted their first loss yeah. on this map it was against the first, Flash Wolves. First chink in the armor, if yes. you will. And we've started to feel that that armor it got picked apart, and now it's been rebuilt a little bit. And, you know, looking a little bit more well polished now, you know, maybe there's still a few rusty links in there, but. It's looking good, it's looking like a decent suit, but if anything is gonna tarnish the sheen, it is Hanamura. This is, like you said, the biggest challenge. And what's more is they have to turn it around here. Absolutely, because 0-2 on the scoreboard, we've already said how important this match is in general, how important this map now is overall for that result. We, we could go to an escort here, which would speak well to Blank because escort has been one of their most successful game modes. And it gets to be their pick. And it, of course, yeah, it gets to be their pick as well, which is best of all. But uh, going 0-2 against Flash Wolves so far, being on the back foot on the most difficult game mode statistically for the team, I gotta say, if you're a Flash Wolves fan, you gotta be feeling rather comfortable. If you're a Blank fan, time to get your Blank face on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, I suppose, in a strange way, because they haven't won anything yet, there is no safety net. And that's the one thing that did steer uh, Blank through when they were very consistently losing Assault, was they were often winning first control and then hybrid, or at least, you know, one of those two. And it sounds silly, but you could afford, in a way, to lose Assault, but you can't afford to do that if you're 0 0-2 down. Exactly. So... And, and it's very difficult because Nimbani and Oasis were so close and this one's going to need to be even better from Blank. It's been a lot of close games, but Blank unable to cross over the line. If they're going to do it anywhere, it has to be here now. We're about to get started. And the place they've traditionally found it the hardest already out the gates. Trying to break through this first little choke. Going to do that with no dramas, not losing any members either. This is not quite the Bacon Jack show. We do see that very often, but he and Zonda already wheeling around the back side. They catch Gunba, and it's going to be the Zonda show today. Oh, we'll see what kind of oh, ratings we get. Unfortunately <laughs> for the Zonda show, it he, was does, canceled. he does get picked out himself. This is the kind of thing with Zonda. We say, look, he's great, but he dies. That's an opening now. They've actually kind of pressured Kmomo around the side. They are still dealing with Bacon Jack a little bit. They're not committing to the point just yet because they know they need to wait sort of for Gunba and they need to be able to keep the path clear for him. They also need to not uh, kind of pigeonhole themselves into anywhere. Flash rules can kind of collapse on them. And so far, doing a good job of balancing that as they catch Realm it now. That was, a trade back. that was a trade back onto Gunba, but that's fine because Gunba was still just regrouping. That was Bacon Jack wasting time catching the Zenyatta. Now Ichu up, he's holding down the choke and the path is clear for the reinforcements to flood through as they start to clean out Flash Wolves. Jongi commits the point, came home, is forced to take a dive. They know this is done and Blank will push it through. That is uh, a big win for Blank. They get a lot of time off that push and where Zonda succeeded, he also failed hand in hand. Now the problem is, that was not a worthwhile trade for, for Zonda at the end of the way. Killing Gumba, great. Losing a, a, your own life. Your respawn distance is unfortunately very unfavorable for that first cap defense. But where it's going to be favorable now is on the second cap. And this is where Blank have 
naturally yeah. found it very difficult to break through. They absolutely have. Good pulse bomb out, but it goes Eden. wide. And Blank Eden. actually have ultimates to go off with this one. Despite having the comp change up, they pressure out the shield. Now they commit the visor. Who are they going to catch with this? No one. They all kind of head for the hills. They got the sound barrier running as well. They don't want to commit to the low ground yet. They want to get kills in there. They finally get one on Zonda. Aita is able to wrap around the side. And he's actually managed to get a nice tasty morsel to go with it to catch this realman. Good sleep on the backside, but the Ana alone can't do anything about it. Self-destruct on the point from both Divas. In fact, Sinclair will finally take out Atar. Blank, they're struggling to kind of close out this third now as the respawn's Ooh, coming. Good sleep on Dajongi, actually. May just give them a better run rate to catch this third out, but only until he wakes up. And they haven't quite closed out these kills yet. May just need to back it off here. A little unfortunate to not catch that third just yet, but they kind of want to keep this one alive. They're committing to this one. No, now they're not. Trill takes a retreat. I was going to say it would be a mistake to commit <laughs> yeah. back onto this one. They don't really have the ground for it. They're losing too many members, waiting for too many respawners and not even reinforcing as quickly as flash will zone now that sleep onto Aether was extremely important because they lost the majority of their damage output relying only on eat up is unfortunately not going to be enough here they do have a decent number of ultimates coming in the big one Urshela look for the ult that could be a game winner and they did actually pressure well on the first one as well they didn't get shut out before they'd set up which is what has happened to them in the past now they just need to get themselves set up oh, that's a, that's a <laughs> hello yeah uh, okay Trill kind of uh, takes I mean, he, he got Zonda technically, I suppose, but hey, uh, they've got Bacon Jack as well, but the trade back onto each you up. No more mileage out of the Pulse Bomb, and they are respecting these respawns. They're not going to commit to this. They're going to try and hold the ground that they do have and re retreat so they can get Trill back. With yeah, the well, team. here's the problem is for Trill, that's not a good enough kill. I just said, you yeah. know, for Zonda on the first cap, it's not enough to go for a 1 for 1. For Trill here, it's not good enough to go for a 1 for 1 either because if Trill respawns, it takes ages to get back into this fight. And for Zonda, he just has to just walk a few meters out of his door. He's already there. So one for one by Trill, not not the best trade, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, that one uh, did actually just on the whole end up full short of the mark. Zonda able to commit in to catch RQT as well as good. And they catch Gunba on that one as well. So no Nano Visor for this one. And uh, Blank are now starting to find themselves back in the situation they've been in before all the time on Assault, where they keep losing one at the top of every setup. Yeah, that's very unfortunate as well. Now, Blank coming up to nearly six ultimates. Flash Wolves have been waiting on six ultimates the whole time, saying, where have you guys been? Where's this push been? And we're starting to find Blank in a situation where they are kind of losing a, a decent amount of time here. You, you're losing a lot of the pressure, you're losing a lot of the aggression, and Flash Wolves are happy to wait. They're happy to bleed down the timer. Now they're trying to death ball down the center in a way, and they commit right into Zonda's oh, Dragon correct. Blade. Yeah, they do get a trade back onto Realment, but they need to get a lot more trade backs to draw out more ultimates. They get a Pulse Bomb as well out of that one. I guess they'll be happy with that, but it does run down the clock quite a bit. It does. Two ultimates for a team wipe. Yep, it's pretty good for Flash Wolves. The Blank's still holding onto six ultimates for themselves. It's going to be a difficult one. If Blank can manage to get one third or even two thirds, that'll be fantastic. I'm not expecting a camp out, and the reason for that is Primal Rage still available, Transcendence still available, and there's a Nano Boost you can even put onto Jongi if you want. There's so much stall power out of Flash Wolves, getting a full camp out would be nigh impossible. Exactly. You pretty much have to get a wipe, and it's very hard to get that. I mean, you see how these teams position when those visors come out, right? They're going to try and go for the commit anyway. They do. A, they are able to get this top, so there's going to be the Wheels commit now. Shot. They catch each you up, and they trade back onto Bacon Jack, catching Realment too. And despite this nano boost onto Jongi, they're not quite finding any more mileage for it. The stall tools are running out. The self-destruct didn't catch enough people. Now they're going to get onto the point. This could be their ticket to a third here. Respawns can start to come through, and a transcendence will be available. IQT, they do catch Catch out Zonda there with Kiki's self-destruct. Akutina back on the point, looking to catch out Sinkler here. Realman still has this transcendence and Jongi's ultimate has run out. They do close out on Sinkler. They've got themselves the third and they want to keep going. They catch Kamomo's mech as well, well despite the in. transcendence. They are absolutely all they got in, but now they're looking to get pushed all back out. The respawns have come through, but they bled flash walls for everything they had. And they forced a change up as well. Gumba even changed on the Sombra there. He thought the fight was going to go on for a bit longer. Bacon Jack thought it was all over. He went on to the May. I thought that was actually a big mistake because you need Bacon Jack's damage power, damage output. You're not going to get that out of me. This is a Sun Sister XQQ kind of mistake where he kind of does this thing on Assault himself. Bacon Jack's actually going to stay here. 
maybe it'll work out against Trill, but there's actually not enough tanks for, I think, the mate to be super useful. Yeah, that's the thing. They're, they're trying to just isolate someone, but, I mean, who? I, they're trying to get Trill. Trill, yeah, well, does, get him, actually. It does work, but, I mean, it, it's going to work once. They just didn't really recognize that the Mei was there. Once may be enough, though. The clock is quite lean. Actually, this is this is now starting to really uh, remind me of that first time we saw Hanamura, because that's when Bacon Jack actually did bring up the Mei as well. That was specifically... Um, where Blank decided, you know, let's run a Reaper against that, so maybe they'll actually do that again this time. We it had was, fun. We had fun a, making uh, fun of that. Yeah. It was a quote-unquote counter, and that is a, a quote-unquote from Blank themselves, uh, because you can just DPS out the main wall. Maybe that's exactly what they want to do. I would say, actually, that a good choice here would be to alter your attacking path. They don't have to attack on the top right, although they would like they to. Go. So actually force out the main wall early on the bottom. Yeah, that's actually quite smart because they're able to commit up there anyway. They actually catch Realm and they force Bacon Jack back. Atar's going to open up with this tactical visor. They've already forced the positioning here. Zonda may be able to get a response with this Dragon Blade. Jongi does catch Ichu up. That's big and that's a big stall tool gone as well. Now they commit the Nano Blade combo. Forces out the sound barrier from RQT. And Zonda, he has to duck for cover while the self-destruct comes well, up. But he what? catches Atar. He didn't see him slip past him there. They may be able to get a second third, but they're struggling. It's contested. The defender's advantage is still a factor. And blank, they're running out of time. In fact, they're pretty oh, much that's out of time here. As well. that's, that is disastrous. They may disastrous. just be done for. Yeah, there. You, you do not want this when you're about to go into overtime. That is just salt in the wounds against blank. They don't have time to wait for this. They just got to go. Uh, they lose another play. Who's even going to be able to go? And yeah, they lose. Eat you up. Who is booking it for the point? This is that panic. This is that trickle in. They're not. Playing calm, I mean, it's hard to, sure, but they're not killing anyone. No one's able to get any mileage. Flashals have their number. Blank, better than the last time this happened because they did get a third this time. Last time they technically didn't, but that was not anywhere near a comfortable move on the second point. Had they got a third off that snowball after getting that thir first cap, maybe they could have actually pushed it through. Uh, the thing about Blank on Assault so far is they look reasonably over patient on the attack and then overly panicked in the overtime. We've yeah. spoken about this overtime already, but Blank seem to play worse in, in overtime. They seem to play, play better outside of overtime. It's during overtime when Blank tend to make the biggest mistakes, when those mistakes get revealed and punished the hardest as well, specifically by a team as good as Flash Wolves. And if you're Flash Wolves, this is a bit of a flashback because now for the second time, at least minimum on a row for Hanamura against Blank, it's been a full defense on the second cap. Blank cannot get themselves through and Flash Wolves are looking ready to win this. But I tell you what, if Blank, their weakness is in overtime, Flash Wolves, their strength seems to be in overtime. They are so cool and carb. It's like they, they, they find some kind of rock within themselves that they just kind of attach to and they are completely cool throughout the entire thing. The calls are clear. They're all followed up on. They deal with the other team's panic. They don't let it get the better of them. They don't get taken by surprise ever. I actually want to speak to Bacon Jack a little bit more here as well because I want to correct myself. I said, and I still stick by this statement, I said, Bacon Jack going to May super early before the third, first third even came out. A little bit too panicky. Should have probably stayed onto the tracer for the extra damage output. Didn't need to stall out just yet. Actually staying on the actually staying on the May though, that was well played from a decision making mm -hmm. point of view because Blank were not prepared for that. And because he stayed onto the May, that surprise pick with the May wall got them another fight win and won them more time. And Flash Wars. That was so good for them in blank. They need the time so bad. The only reason that ended up being okay was because they'd actually run down so much time before that. This is a very quick move out of the gates by Flash Wolves. Blank of a tall ass ahead of them Zonda now. Nearly down. Yeah, very good pressure onto Zonda, and that's very well done there. And that should kind of uh, cut off this attack for Flash Wolves. They might want to try and commit to the rest of this, but Blank is able to retreat here. They're going to be just fine. Somehow, I don't know what it is, but Zonda manages to find his death, manages to be the first person down consistently on his team. You never see Atar in those kind of positions, but you do see Zonda in them. And luckily for them, or fortunately for them, it is early enough that uh, Flash Wolves don't feed any more members into that, and they haven't lost a ton of time, but uh, 
It does slow them down. Yeah, they're now trying to pressure around this side instead, and Blanca well poised to react to it. Look at where this turret is set up. This is almost ideal for this one as they catch Sinclair. That's a good open up now, and they're pressuring them way back. Flash rolls are going to have to pretty much fully retreat here. They do unfortunately lose RQT here, Blank, but they're keeping the pressure up fairly well here. They don't quite lose eat you up, which is very crucial. Well, losing RQT does mean the turret suddenly gets opened up, and this is now oh, a big commit. Oh, that's a quick commit. And a kill onto Ato as well Ouch. is going to be very important. Yeah, and uh, that's the reset up for the turret just in the nick of time there, but it doesn't really help out. And because they lost Ato at the top of that one, they weren't able to commit their ultimates. I don't think they realized that the sound barrier was going to be available, and it got committed very, very quickly. No hesitation for the follow-up either, and they just kind of overwhelmed Blank, who had way more ultimates in the pocket than Flash Wolves at that moment. Yeah, I came over, going to take a dive, reset the mech, or actually just change hero, one or the other. Little final commit out there from Trill was a little bit of a question mark as well. Didn't need to feed that extra 500 HP worth of ults, specifically not when Flash Wolves are going for that snowball push. Now, this is an important one for Blank to defend because this could make the difference between winning and losing. One third will be the goal from Flash Wolves. And in fact, if things go their way, they can get a full cap out here. This is very interesting going to be running this Mercy. All the Rez is yeah. important. That's the thing. That's that, what they value. That's exactly. It shows how much they value that Rez, especially those kind of tempo Rez's, because they can't afford to give up a third. And I do, I, I do very much like that decision making. Oh dear, though, losing a tar. Not like that. Open up the Zonda now. Kiki no gets taken out of the mech. No Matrix, no nothing, no defense. The third already going through. It only has to go a little bit further from here. They do force Zonda off that high ground, but they're not contesting the point itself. The respawns may not be enough. They don't quite catch the sticky. The tactical visor comes out, and they don't quite buy enough time. And Flash Wolves run it home at breakneck pace. And it looks like Assault is still the indelible weakness for Blank. Yep, Hanamura is still foreign territory for the Australians. Might need to check your visa for that one next time. And Blank are unfortunately going to go down 0-3 to Flash Wolves once again in the series. Now, it's the closest 0-3 we've ever seen from Blank against Flash Wolves, but this now more or less secures Flash Wolves as the number one team going into the playoffs. Definitely in terms of strength and possibly in terms of actual yeah. points on the leaderboard as well. Zonda, look, again, Good plays coming up from him. He gets picked out early, but he's also extremely powerful as a player himself. Blank, they just couldn't get it done at the end of the day. That's really unfortunate. 0 oh, 3 is not what you wanted to see. You wanted to see a minimum of five maps if Blank were going to go down at all. The one thing that they can take away from this, though, and this is actually significant in itself as much as they did lose this 3 0, because actually every single one of those felt extremely tight at different points. Unfortunately, Hanamura was the least so, but even then, even then, there was the potential to get it over the line. It's just that little bit harder because it's, you know, a great map for Flash Wolves and it's one of the weakest for Blank, weakest game mode. Blank still showed up big mm -hmm. and they only just showed up enough against Machi last week. You wonder how much more they can show up in about three or four weeks' time. In fact, I believe it is four weeks' time when we start hitting playoffs. I actually feel like between Blank and AHQ, Blank are the ones who are within striking distance of Flash Wolves. AHQ have a lot more to prove. And look, you are probably going to secure a playoff spot if you're Blank. If you feel you that close to Flash Wolves here, yeah, you actually, uh, you, you pretty much are, yeah. Look, if, if you are already this close to Flash Wolves, surely you can push it that last little bit over the line. They are the team. You, you said it yourself, striking distance. I would have to agree with that. They are definitely the team closest to Flash Wolves. Still, though, the result says 3-0. and What really would have made the difference here is had they won Oasis, had they won Mbani, either one of those maps, yeah. even preferably both, we would, we would have gone to Escort. They would have been if they would have been able to afford losing Assault. If, if, if Assault is a bit of a write-off for Blank, I don't want to say it is a write-off, but after that performance, it's still weak for them, right? They're, they're definitely not favoured to beat Flash Rules on Assault. So if they had won a different map, we would have gone to... An escort, mm -hmm. and then maybe a map five because the escort suddenly favors blank so much better. And they could have, you know, they could have just taken it straight to Dorado. And you're right, yeah, they, that's, that's where that favor kind of kicks in. All right, Smites, you've now seen that as well. 0 oh and three, blank oh and are three. close, not close enough. What do you think? They're close, but they're not close on Hanamura at all. You guys touched on it pretty well there. Assault still a big weakness for blank. And to touch on Hanamura, this match specifically, right? It felt like. Flash Wolves were still just running the same thing that they've run for a very long time, very practiced at, and still obviously very, very good at, right? 
blank though, they're bringing out Trill on Reinhardt. This is a little bit different compared to what we've last latest seen on Hanamura coming out of blank. So that means that they're still trying newer things while Flash Wolves are still happy to just practice the same thing they've been doing over and over. I actually think Flash Wolves have done more new things than Blank. Now, for Blank, Trill going Reinhardt is not out of the question because he yeah. is, he was and still is. Now, he was the main tank player, then the DPS and the triple DPS, and now back to being main tank. So, come then pulling out the Reinhardt, that's kind of standard. It came over pulling out the Reinhardt, a little bit weird because that's not something we've seen out of Flash Wolves before. Of yeah. course, yeah, that, that, that was mostly speaking about Hanamura specifically right, and, yes. and Blank's approach to it, uh, which is, is still different to what they've been doing the last few weeks. So that's a bit of a more recent change up. But you're absolutely right. Flash Wolves on the other two maps, very, very different things coming at Hollywood and Numbani, very different things. I'm going to speak to Zonda as well, being able to bring up the Genji, because yeah. he said so many times, look, he's not confident on the Genji anymore. He's not confident that he can get the job done. So he's staying on Soldier. So the fact that he is able to be flexible around those two roles and really make the best of both of them in different situations as well. I want to bring it back to a situation on Machi, where on in Temple of Anubis, he sort of died on Soldier, came back as the Genji, lived long enough to be able to secure that defense. So it was a really effective play that he made. And even against Blank, now you see in the play of the game, you see it just in general across the board able to get the pickouts when he needs them. I'm now really excited actually for Blank versus AHQ, not just because yes. it's probably going to determine who gets the second seed and actually even then may not, but the reason I'm excited is Blank were able to shut down Zonda very well and they were able to deny Bacon Jack that room to play. On AHQ, Dizzy is harder to shut down than Zonda, but whoever they do put on Tracer is easier to deal with than Bacon Jack and it is just it just creates this slightly different thing to react with to react to and I wonder if Blank are gonna find that easier, whether they're gonna find it harder, I really don't know, but I'm really curious to see how it'll go. What I'll speak to, what I'll say to that is when we watch, uh, if you remember the AHQ versus, versus, AHQ versus Flash Wolf series, which was just yesterday, so hopefully you do remember this. <laughs> I do, yes, I was there. <laughs> Dizzy specifically on Soldier was shut down so hard by Flash Wolves, he had to change the Tracer himself yeah, yeah. while they were still running the Triple The precedent tank. is set, certainly. It is doable, and Blank will have taken lessons from that. All right, we're now going to check out the play of the game. It does, in fact, go to Jongi from Flash Wolves, and... Can't be Bacon does, Jack uh, twice. Yeah, 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 you don't want to give it to Bacon <laughs> Jack twice. So you'll give it to the guy that you haven't given it to for so... You, got, you give well, it to the guy that you try and not give it to because he's gotten so many yeah. walls so far, and it is Jongi. And I've got to say, it's well-deserved because I think he is, without a doubt, the best Winston player in the tournament, yeah, just actually, on Winston at least. You actually can't give it to Bacon Jack for that one. As much as it's a bit of a running joke, oh yeah, Bacon Jack, Bacon Jack, everything. You know, when it's, if it's not Jongi, it's Bacon Jack. Actually, he did not have that much of an impact in that series. Like I said, he was very well dealt with. I think better than any team has really dealt with him so far during Flash Rules' dominant streak. I actually think Jongi was more, specifically talking Oasis. Mm. This is a point that I actually didn't get to bring up earlier, but when your Winston can go down that early and the target pressure on Winston is so great, that's a difference between teams. Machi never took down Jongi, not yeah. like the way that Blank did. The fact that Blank took down Jongi, as soon as that happened, without even seeing anything else right from the get-go, that's when I knew it was going to be a close game because that would never normally happen against Flash Wolves. Flash Wolves are not used to seeing that, not in a match setting, not in the OPC against these other teams. And that's the strength of the team and the strength of Jongi. And, and speaking to that, right, the strength of the team and Jongi together, was Jongi was fantastic because his team allows him to be. Even specifically that one crucial moment on Numbani where Zonda sprinted around the back line to get a great a tactical visor, and he didn't end up getting that one, but it meant that we could see Jongi do his job, take Azar out of the fight, where uh, Trill just wasn't able to because he was constantly drawn away to all these different situations. Flash Wolves didn't allow for Jongi to be drawn away like that. Jongi was always on the offensive and never had to be on the defense. His offensive pressure is great. I think I, I remember on Nambani as well, a couple of the kill streaks that he made, target selection was just exactly where it needed to be. Shutting down Atar very early, getting the perfect drop onto him, straight down, gets the leap damage, gets the melee damage, zaps him as well, then immediately gets the leap onto Gumba straight away, perfect leap right on top of his head. That's why you call uh, you almost want to call that a Gumba Stomp. Gumba Stomp? Gumba Stomp. Gumba yeah. Stomp. Yeah, yeah. That would be a pretty apt term, actually. I, w I wouldn't disagree with that. I I'm never going to get tired. Just, by the way, while we're on Winston's here, I'm never going to get tired of coming into the map and you see the Winston preloading the jump with the... 
Never gets what I'm not going to get tired of is the post-match interview. It's going to be Flash Walls with K Moment. Let's check it out. I'll be translating this one over. I'm going to talk to you very much, do we? And says, yeah. Usually Sinclair gets a bit more praise than I do. I don't really Sinclair doesn't really speak much, apparently. Right, so maybe I'll mix, maybe we'll have to chat with Sinclair next time. So, so Blank has made a lot of improvements. They, they found their own they found their own comfort a lot and they found a good way to play against us. How do you feel about your play? So a lot of people play Torbi on, on the bunny, but you didn't play Torbi today. So we thought we thought they were going to play fairer, so we, we didn't want to bring up the Torbi to try and counter that. So Zonda died a lot really quickly. So our tanks didn't protect them well. And both Anna and, and Zonda on Soldier got pressured out. Sorry, just excuse the technical issues. So I don't play the Winston as well as Zhongli, so I will pull out the Reinhardt instead. <laughs> so, playing, a lot of people bring the Reinhardt on the third point in Nubani. <laughs> but you brought it on the second cap, and you're saying, yeah, we, we do that as a strength. So we, we do bring it out, and it's something that we'd like to do. So on Hanamura, we really play the high ground, low ground difference. So we play Anna and Zenyatta because we don't really need the Lucio for the defense. So your coach really says you guys don't look as good as you could. How do you, what do you think your weakness is? So Zonda usually is someone that can pick out our weaknesses quite well. So Zonda is a pretty scary person. He says, yeah, he's, he's a very aggressive kind of, very assertive person. The Zonda said you don't play too well, apparently. So I know, so Kim was saying he's, he's more saying ways that I could be playing better rather than I play better. So when we first started, my problems and Zhongyi's problems were probably the weakest. Zhongyi looked pretty good today. Alright, so Kim was saying in scrims and in practice, it actually, it's actually. He says he and Jake Jongi play the weakest in the scrims. So if we don't if we don't protect players well enough, that usually gives us a loss. Right, so we're actually gonna go to a couch interview as well. With two members of Blank, Serenity, Eat Up, and Bacon Jack, the Taiwanese Chinese sections I will be translating over. Xander is quite impressed with the Chinese from Eat Up. 
两边已经交手过第四个循环。So you played each other four times. 一期的一个对战，各自打完。那两边都是在队伍来讲，他算是一个蛮主力的一个输出。You're both tracer players. How do you how do you deal with and approach the other team's tracer? Uh, I think the up the sunglasses is really so dominant. Korea. I think it up tracer is as good as Korean tracers. I personally think it's the Korean sunglasses that are better. So you think his ability is actually better than the Korean sunglasses? Yes. Do you think he's that good right now? 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 So do you usually, how do you sort of make that comparison? I think the Korean sunglasses are very good in the game. So for the quality of the game, I think it's not easy. So I use my own experiences in that. So uh, with the current meta, uh, Trace is uh, the most important DPS players on uh, on any dive. Uh, what, do you, how do you, what do you think of making Jack's Tracer? Um, this Tracer is really like, it's one of the best I've seen so far, I reckon. Like, even with the Koreans playing that we practice against, it's really good individually and he plays well with his team as well. It's got the aim, it's got the brain, like everything you, you can ask for. Uh, Haro uh, Wei, Pagan the Sangguang, uh, Fei Tang Yo Shou, Gen Chang Jiao Yu Xie, uh, Hangu the Chenzo, Ta, Ta Jiao the Pagan Bijao Yo Shou, uh, Ta Putsi, Nigga, Zundu Go, Na, Hai, uh, Gen Doyo, Zo Pei Her. Wow, this bin, Yang Bin, Do Gay, Doi Fang, Gao Ping Jia. Now, we may allow each other, Ping Chang, Ta Jai, Shun Dian, the Shou, Ying Gai Hui, Yu Shou, Yu Shou, Yu Shou, Yu 他那么比赛，其实他们闪光的实力都非常非常的顶尖。那你们跟他们练习一定会有对战嘛？那你们怎么看待他们的一个闪光的现在的一个程度 ？So how do you go against them? And how do you see what they're doing with the traces? 虽然韩国闪光没有欧美闪光准，可是我认为闪呃韩国强的原因是因为他们的大局观与观念观念意识都非常的好。So Koreans have really strong macro play as well. 非常好的时刻去收割敌人。Extremely good DPS is on top of that. So how do you play your pulse bombs? They are really good. I think they have a lot of influence from League of Legends, which helps them make the wise. So they are really good. I think they have a lot of influence from League of Legends, which helps them make the wise. Since um, our usual practice opponents are Korean pro teams, um, how do you think? What do you think of Korean tracers? Um, all of them are like really good. Compared to the ones here, I guess, because they they get the the chance to play against the best teams in Korea as well, so it's good practice for the aim and thinking as well. Uh, he said, um, Korean's sunglasses are better than the other sunglasses in the past. And they are not only strong, but they are also very ambitious. They have a lot of ideas. Uh, for our practice, it's a very good chance. Okay, so let's ask the last question. 想要问最后一个问题，就是关于闪光，当然它有一部分，它是它的一个攻击。那在另外一个比较强的一个重点是，脉中炸弹累积的情况之下，你能够利用什么样角度去捏到敌人，或者是呃为队伍造产生一个很大的一个破坏？那这个其实也要问一下，平常会针对脉中炸弹的去。丢丢的一个角度或位置去训练吗？或者有什么样的一个经验？你有训练的一个方式可以跟我们分享？嗯，我自己习惯是每天起来就是开个制定，然后选六个六个。So、I, I play custom games。可以训练准度。你有你，因为你打机打玩家的时候 ，Q 会累积嘛？你有脉冲炸弹，你就可以顺便练习一下。So I play custom games with alt available and with six bots to be able to just warm up, just placement of the boss bot. Usually, how do you do you practice with your sticks on tracer? And if you do, are there any tips or experience that you gain that you can share with the viewers? To be honest, I don't really practice my stickies. I guess it just came with time playing tracer all the time, and I guess my advice is just. Play the hero. That's all I have. I don't have anything special. Uh, he said he didn't make a specific goal to use his sunglasses to practice. All the tricks he collected now are based on his experience from playing the Dragon King. He suggests that if anyone wants to play with sunglasses, they should try to practice more. So, 
。是，那么很高兴哦，这个两位 OPC 最强的闪光接受我们的访问。Very happy to have both the two strongest tracers in tournament here. Bye. Of course, as the interview between Blank and Flash Rules, Eat Up. And Bacon Jack as well, the two best tracers in the competition. Any thoughts about any, <laughs> any of the comments they made? Well, Bacon Jack has a pretty pretty good training regimen for his pulse bombs. Just go up against bots and pulse bomb all day long. Yeah, he needs to. Uh, I bit. think he needs to have more soup and iced tea though. All right. Well, let's take a look at the leaderboards as we have now rounded up the second day of week nine. Flash Rules sitting pretty at the top, dominant, twenty-one and three, three match. Difference between AHQ, who are currently in second, 18 and 5, blank 17 and 5. Hong Kong Attitude now scraping ahead in fourth at 11, 10, Machi 11, 11, 5 or 7 and 14, detonated goal 3, 18, and Sun Sister at 0 and 22. And of course, we'll take a look at the match list as well, just to get a little bit of a roundup this evening. We started with Machi versus Flash Wolves, 3 and 0 going their way, and the Flash Wolves came back to get a 3 and 0 victory themselves so a very resounding victory for flash rules across the board they beat ahq 3 and they beat marchi 3 and 0 flash rules they beat blank 3 and 0 as well all the toughest competition in the tournament now they've beaten 3 and 0 nothing stands between them and that guaranteed to the guaranteed guaranteed sure guaranteed seed it's a guaranteed to the grand finals and of course, we look forward to that as we move on through for the next couple of weeks in the final round robin. Saw a lot more games to look forward to, including AHQ and Blank as well. And that's coming up tomorrow. First up, it is the first game tomorrow, and you're going to want to check that one out, as well as Blank versus Machi, Fireball Machi, and then Hong Kong Attitude versus Detonator Gold to round things up. I've been Kevin Avril Walker. Joined with me today has been Matt Pixie Carroll and Matt Smite Ross from the Full Circle production team. Have a very good evening. We will see you tomorrow.